Great, question three. There are 700 people in line for a popular amusement park ride when the ride begins operating in the morning. Once it begins operation, the ride accepts passengers until the park closes eight hours later. While there is a line, people move on to the ride at a rate of 800 people per hour. The graph above shows the rate R at which people arrive at the ride throughout the day. Time T is measured in hours from the time the ride begins operation. Part A, how many people arrive at the ride between T equals zero and T equals three? Show the computations that lead to your answer. Okay, so we're talking about people arriving. So I know that R of T is talking about people arriving. And this is how many people, and I notice that R of T is people per hour. So to get from people per hour to people, I know that I'm gonna need to take the integral from zero to three of R of T. And if I'm taking the integral and I'm giving a picture, I'm going to find the area under the curve. So from zero to three, I want to find this area under the curve. And I notice it's not really a good shape. Um, I'm going to draw a line right here and I'm going to break it up into trapezoid one and trapezoid two. You could do it several different ways. You could do a triangle and a trapezoid and a rectangle, but that's the way I'm going to choose to do it. So trapezoid one is going to be one half the height is going to go from zero to two, so the height will be two. Um, base one will be 1,000, and then base two will be 1,200, okay? And if I work that out, that will turn out to be 2,200, okay? Then trapezoid two is one half times the height, the area between, distance between two and three is just one, and then base one is 1,200, and base two is 800. Okay, so that answer will be 1,000. All right, and if I add those two together, I will get, that will be 2,200 plus 1,000. That will be 3,200 people. Okay, that one was worth two points. If you wrote down the integral and you made sure you included that it's going from zero to three, that was worth a point. And then if you got the right answer, that was also worth a point. Okay, part B, is the number of people waiting in line to get on the ride increasing or decreasing between t equals two and t equals three? All right, I notice that we have two things going on. We have people moving onto the line, onto the ride, and we have people arriving at the ride. So to figure out how many people are waiting in line, I'd need to subtract those two somehow. Um, since it says, is the number of people increasing or decreasing, I actually need to <clears throat> look at the derivative and basically we're gonna find the, we'll do a derivative chart and then go from there. Um, okay, so I need derivative is just, if I'm talking about people, I'm gonna be looking at the people per hour. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna see how many people are moving onto the ride. So we've got 800 people per hour moving onto the ride. Um, so actually, you know what, I don't think we want to move on to the ride. First of all, we have people getting, going to the ride, um, which is R of T, and R of T is measured, and so we're going to put R of T minus the number of people that actually are going to move on to the ride, which would be 800, and if I want a critical number, I'm going to set it equal to zero. I didn't do R prime because R is already a prime because it is a rate, it's people per hour, so just clarifying that. Um, if I'm solving this for R of T, I have R of T equals 800. And if I look up my, my graph, I'm basically just going to look, where's the graph of R equaling 800? And I'll notice that it's at this point right here when t equals 3. So t equals 3 is my critical value. And now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it on a chart. So I'm going to put 3 on, three on my chart. And then I basically need to put um, numbers. I'm going to go into this equation right here. I'm going to put um, something that's smaller than 3 in there. So let's say I put 2. Um, R of T is 1,200, 1,200 minus 800 is a positive number. And then let's say I pick four, so four is 400. So 400 minus 800 gives me a negative number. And then I want to know is the number of people waiting in line to get on the ride increasing or decreasing between T equals two and T equals three. Um, two and three would be in this range right here, two to three. So I know my um, derivative is positive which means the number of people waiting to get in line is increasing. So I am going to say the number of people waiting in line 
is increasing because, and I'm just going to say R of t minus 800 is positive. All right, and you could definitely have justified it a different way. You can certainly ask me um, what you put to see if it was acceptable. This part was worth, oh, just one point. So you either got it right and had a good reason, or you didn't get it right, and oh well. All right, part C. At what time t is the line for the ride the longest? How many people are in the line at that time? Justify your answers. All right, so if I want, let's see, at what time is the line for the ride the longest? So longest has to do with the maximum, and the line for the ride would be measured in people per hour. Okay, and actually, that is not correct. Um, line for the ride has people, so if I want to find out the max for the people, again, we need to get to people per hour, which is the derivative, basically. But if I'm dealing with people per hour again, I'm dealing with R of t, and again, I'm going to subtract 800, and again, if I want a max, I'm looking for a critical number, so I'm looking for where that equals zero. Again, we'll get R of t equals 800, and just like before, we had t equals 3. So t equals 3 is a value, and just from looking at what we did before, I since um, t of since r of t minus 800 is going from a positive to a negative, I could verify that that is a maximum. So I would say the line is longest at t equals 3, and that would be because r of t minus 800 changes from positive to negative, okay? And then, um, so I answered that, and then it says how many people are in the line at that time, okay? Keep in mind that this is a rate, and so um, what we are going to do for this one is to get actually how many people, we can take the integral of that, so we're gonna take the integral of r of t minus 800, and let's see, um, at that time, so we're going to go from 0 to 3. Okay, and then when I take the integral of this, um, the integral from 0 to 3, we already found out was, I don't know if I did this problem, but we'll just do it. Okay, um, r of t minus 800, the integral under the curve from 0 to 3, I think we already found that out in a different part, and that was equal to 3200 and then minus the integral from 0 to 3 of 800 would be 800t, and that would be measured at 2400, oh, excuse me, that would be measured at 3 and 0, and so that's going to give me 2400 minus 0, so that's going to be now 3200 minus 2400, and then I'm going to add the people that were in line to start with, so there were 700 people in line to start with, so if I take um, 3200, minus 2400 plus 700, that should give me 1500 people were waiting in line. So that part was worth three points. Okay, we got one point for finding t equals three. So if we identified that t equals three was the time at which the ride was the long, the line was the longest, we get a point. We got one point for finding the 1500, and then we got one point for justifying, so saying something about the R of t minus 800 changes from positive to negative, so that would also be worth one point. Okay, ran out of room here. I'm going to go up top here for part D. D, write, but do not solve, an equation involving an integral expression, so we need an integral, of R whose solution gives the earliest time in which there is no longer a line. So um, let's go ahead and start. We're kind of going to go with... Um, everything that we've done down here, because it's pretty much going to be the same. Um, so I'm going to have, I'm actually going to take ex all this work right here, and you'll notice here we had 1,500 people in line. I want to know when there will no longer be a line. So I just want to know where would that equal zero. So I'm basically just going to have this. I'm going to have, instead of going from zero to three, though, I don't know I'm going to stop at three. I'm just going to start at some value t. So r of t minus 800, and that is an integral, and then plus 700, and I want to know when that answer is going to equal 0. 
So that should be my setup and I should be all set to go for that one. Um, the test writers, they did simplify that this to 0 of t of r minus 800 t plus 700. So they actually took the integral of 800 and got 800 t. So it's no longer, so this is the only part under an integral, but it doesn't matter. It's totally up to you how you'd like to leave that answer. That part was worth um, 300, it's not 300, it was worth three points. It would be nice if it was worth 300 points. We'd get a gazillion on our test. Um, the, you'd get one point for um, finding the 800t. And I'm not sure if they would accept, I'm guessing they'd accept if you just put that under the integral, but that was worth one point. Um, you get one point for the integral setup, and then you get one point for the actual final full-out equation.